welcome to everybody today <clears throat> and a welcome to those of you who will be listening and watching after. I get a lot of feedback, people telling me they do, which I appreciate. I think it's uh, it's just always a, a good message, good message to be reminded of. Today, we're going to take it just a little bit longer. It might go about 25 minutes, but uh, I'm going to start out with, I always love the magazines that come out in our profession because they are stories that I either think are powerful or they're stories that make my stomach turn. And, uh, you know, everybody, I've talked endlessly about the choosing wisely uh, uh, issue with uh, ACA and how I disagree with it. And you can see at the top of the new dynamic chiropractic delegates put the brakes on the ACA changes. So it's good to know somebody in the profession has the guts and the brains to, to realize the stupidity and the choosing uh, relationship. But if you look just below that, defending chiropractic, swift response to the scathing article in Forbes and I want to proceed to just show you, here's what was in Forbes. Here's a quick way for the U.S. government to save over half a billion dollars. Stop paying for coverage of medical procedures that have no evidence to support them and that are a little more than quackery. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services now releases annual reports on how much it spends broken down according to the procedures. The latest da data for 2015 reveals Medicare spent $564 million plus on pseudoscientific medical practices. I'm talking about chiropractic and osteopathic manipulation. These are similar but distinct belief systems, both involving bones and both with no evidence to back them up. Now, our profession, what we do is we fight the fact that yes, there is research and, and we're always gonna hear these, um, you know, the hatchet people hired by the medics to come back and say there's no research. It's just a constant battle. If we uh, uh, subscribe in this profession to doing the structural fingerprint exam on every patient, we are gonna send this loud mouth home without anything to say because we're not selling chiropractic. We're selling the need for musculoskeletal balancing, mobility, and flexibility. So uh, in that process, the pill pusher can, can fight to push the pill. The psychic can fight to push emotional change. But we are going to do the things needed to improve the alignment of crooked man. So all the more reason that we want to do a structural fingerprint exam on everybody. And my goal is to make this the standardized examination in the chiropractic profession. And it would be wonderful to shove it right up this guy's face. So that's the immediate opinion. But let's get on. I've got two case histories today, both of them involving structural fingerprint exams. 23-year-old professional basketball player came in last week, injured left ankle, chronic. He continues to play, but there's no healing and no treatment going on. So if you look at Crooked Man, again, it is always this. It's not partially or maybe, it is always this. And this is a guy who's playing pro ball now. No one has ever looked at him. So again, what are we going to do, acute or non-acute? We're going non-acute because he, he's still mobile. He can stand. It's just, you know, and this guy's a leaper. He's above the rim. He's a guard, but he's above the rim. Imagine the abuse going through that ankle. And so we're doing the non-acute structural fingerprint exam on him. Now, when we give the report, again, I talk about the importance of having crooked man present when you give that uh, report starting at the feet. I had a patient today. In fact, it's it's ironic. The second patient, the second case history today, her mother, she said to me yesterday, she said, you know, you gave me a report on my daughter and you started at the feet and you proceeded up the structure and told me everything going on. I have never seen anything so logical in my whole life. And that's what you're able to do. If you have crooked man present, start at the feet. They don't look like the uh optimal feet therefore we have to start with orthotics and it it works like a charm so therefore here's crooked man and here's his feet and yes they are collapsed so we have to start with orthotics they are not uh optimal feet we need to get them optimal so we have to start with orthotics and we can see in the process that the left blue vertical line is collapsed more so it's the collective collapse of the left arches is greater than the collective collapse of the right arches but then we look at the two red boxes he's got 62% versus 38% so he has major 
um, weight balance, imbalance distribution in his body, and he's got a left ankle that won't heal. And you wonder why? You know, it's more pronated and there's more weight bearing going through that side of the body. So, of course, we recommend our Sepoya Orthotics for the shock absorption, for the flexibility and the durability because it's got the stance guard and as a basketball player, he's moving laterally as well as front to back. So it's the perfect orthotic. He has alignment in his knees is very good. So we're going to move up to the low back. And we can see that his left arches are collapsed, but his left femoral head is 11 and a half millimeters higher than his right. That's almost three eighths of an inch. But in a basketball player who is above the rim and who's you know running how many miles in a game, he's 23 years old. My message to this guy and to go back and tell all your pro buddies, we can add years onto your career if we get you right now. So we are going to be, we just got his orthotics in a couple of days ago. I wasn't here. When he comes in next time, we're going to re-x-ray and we're going to start with a seven millimeter lift on the right. But he may end up, we may end up trying to get up to 14 millimeters because once you put the orthotics in his shoes, probably that left femoral head is going to go even higher. So we want to try and improve it. We want to get it as improved as possible. It may never be perfectly even, but we want to improve it. You can see the gluteal crease does not bisect the symphysis pubes. So there's a lot of abnormal stresses here, despite the fact he has no symptoms. And it, again, you see the left arches are collapsed. Here is the optimal, and we show this to the patient. This is what we are striving for. Then a lateral, this is the lateral. We always will show the normal, so they have a relative comparison. Ferguson's gravity line and sacral base angle. He has an anterior Ferguson gravity line, a dramatically increased sacral base angle, and he's in the age where PARS defects, pending spondylose, stress reactions are highest. He's in a sport that involves tremendous repetitive compression in that low back area. So therefore, we have to start the process of doing what we do to try to reduce this. Now, this is the beauty of the Atlas operating system. It's a standardized approach with the exam, but Dr. A may elect one technique, Dr. B another, Dr. A may choose one physical therapy modality, Dr. B another. Uh, we all have the freedom to be who we are, but it's a uh, professional uh, standardized approach to addressing this guy's problems. If if he went in most offices, they would do a little physical therapy on his ankle, never recommend orthotics, never look at the rest of the structure. So this raises the value of who we are and how valuable we can be to the patient. So and we then show the normal lateral cervical and the curve is important. And we can see he's got a very straight neck. He's got a long, straight neck. So, again, youth hides a lot of sins. 23 years old. He doesn't have any problems yet. So we want to talk to him about the long-term benefits of incorporating a curve back in that neck. And then we show him, here's a neck that is 63 years old, and this is what happens. This is, you know, one patient's case, but we see this time and again, the degeneration that occurs. And then he has the open mouth view, which looks very good. And so, again, this we don't want to give the because that takes, let's see, we do have it. That takes time. And we have our start date and our end date. Now, every patient has a, uh, a willingness or an idea of what treatment they want. We don't dictate what they do. We tell them what we recommend and let them decide. So, again, if it's a cash patient, we have them join Cairo Health USA. We then uh, talk about, you know, how many treatments. Uh, are we going to see you for a year, which is always our preferred choice? Are we going to see you for a month? You know, and I put it right on their lap. What is it you're looking for? I told you what I recommend. What are you looking for? And then we have orthotics, one or two pair. There's the line for that. And then are any nutritional supplements that we have. And then here's the cost. So we go over all of the costs prior to laying our hands on them. And it's the perfect way to do it. No one can ever complain to you. 
and they have to make the decisions before you start treating them. Now, they could say, let's start today. I'd like to talk it over, and I'll let you know next time. That's fine. I, I, I extend trust to them, and it's, it's the beginning of developing a trusting relationship with them, so it works well. So that's our report, and that's how we handle this young guy. And I, uh, what we'll be doing for him is lasering that ankle, getting his orthotics, getting the lift in there, and then starting the process while he's in Albany of taking care of him to the level we can. But we want to give him a plan of what he can take to other cities with him if he if he decides to pursue the treatment of this. Okay, here's the second girl whose mother was so thrilled with our report. She had been to a rheumatologist and he diagnosed her with juvenile arthritis. She had bilateral hip and knee pains, headaches three times a week, and the treatment was take a leave daily. So she was very frustrated, a very cool mother who, who kind of got it quick that I don't trust this guy. You know what I mean? Too quick of an exam, too quick of a title, and I don't want my daughter taking drugs every day of her life. So the the irony of this is that my social media director, Raquel, and I met two weeks ago and last week with the local newspaper on their digital marketing and advertising. And the guy who is putting together that program for us, he referred her in, which I'm thrilled with because when we told him, you know, about structural fingerprint exam and the whole program, he works with a lot of kids programs and he, he understood it immediately. So here he is out referring her in and now she's going to go back and rave about what's happened. So it's a good, uh, a good situation for us. But anyways, 12 year old girl. And we teach about Mag's Law, and we elect to go non-acute and structural fingerprint exam. And here are her feet. And again, she's bilateral knee pains, bilateral pains, and and they they don't even look at it. He's got her on a drug, and you can see her right arches are more collapsed, and she's got about a 10 or 11 percent difference in body weight distribution. So. That's why I say the structural fingerprint exam is the second coming of Christ for chiropractors because it uncovers everything. And now people are saying, what do I do? Well, you've got to start with orthotics. It just makes it so easy. Now, in addition, she had an increased Q angle on the left, which is going to be interesting when I explain what happened yesterday when she came into my office. So I show the picture to the parents and I show the improvement and it, this picture is worth a million words and every chiropractor should have these two pictures uh it, so when there's an increased q angle you show them this is what happens two minutes later so it's a, a good thing now she's a young girl so she plays softball, recommending two pairs of sepoia full length and three quarters for her cleats and there, here they are so we look at her uh, aps and it's 2.6 millimeters high on the left and if you look her right arches are more collapsed so at first take you would think okay if we put orthotics on her her right arch is collapsed that should bring it up to about level all right now i've got to put the next x-ray in because i i didn't put it in yet so what i did is i had her get into her orthotics yesterday her right arch is more collapsed than her left put them on and she, we re-x-rayed her, and I'm thinking they're going to be level, and they weren't because it went to 3.1 millimeters high on the left. And I said to myself, oh, my gosh, what is going on here? What I forgot is that she had an increased Q angle on the left. So it, incre it improved the arches on the right, but when it improved the Q angle on the left, that put a net 0.5 additional height on the left uh, femoral head, which now meant we put a three millimeter lift in her on her right orthotic. So I can't imagine if you're not doing the x-rays out there that you ever know what the end result is. But I forgot she had an increased left Q angle. And so when I put the orthotics on thinking it would be close to level and it was worse, I couldn't understand it. But then I went back and looked. She had an increased Q angle on the left. The orthotics fixed that, fixed the decrease or the greater collapse on the right, but it was a net 0.5 higher on the left. 
And I hope I haven't confused everyone with that. So we got that on, and that was good. And again, this is the goal. And then here is the lateral, the normal, and here is her lateral. And that looks very good, very good. And again, she's got bilateral hip pain, bilateral knee pain. Much of that is coming from now, I know, the bilateral pronation, the increased Q angle on the left, and the anatomical short leg on the right. Now, here's the normal cervical, and remember, she has headaches. Do you think that could cause any of her headaches? And again, I think this is one of those that probably every chiropractor would agree. You know, and it's funny because you had that individual in the paper who said manipulation and adjustments, there's no research that supports it or shows it. But what we know, whether there's research or not, why it works is that when you have abnormal biomechanics, it increases the loading in that joint, increasing the fixation or the loss of mobility, increasing uh, neurological irritation, the muscle tightness, and all of the associated, you know, joint inflammation. So when you restore mobility back to a fixated joint, a lot of good things happen. That's why chiropractic works. But if we can look at the abnormal loadings and see it on a film, and in combination with the X or, or with the adjustments, start fixing the the loading at the feet, lift if needed. Start incorporating rehabilitative exercises. What we want to do is our profession, we want to win the Nobel Prize before we all die. And this will do it if we can all, you know, get off our butts and start doing stuff like this. And then we do an AP open mouth and it looks pretty good. Although, you know, you can see she, she has some imbalances down through that thoracic spine. But again, we took this barefoot day one and I'm sure that that has an effect on it. Now, I could re-X-ray this. I'm just gun shy on taking too many X-rays on a, a young individual. But, all right, so what we have is, uh, again, we're always encouraging docs, Dr. Stephen Krauss biokinometrics for your uh, digital x-ray. He is a phenomenal guy, phenomenal company, and I want all chiros to be getting digital x-ray. That's just a greedy concern of mine. In addition, we have her report. I got her to sign up for one year. I got her mother to agree, we'll start out three times a week, but we'll get it down to at least once a week for one year. And her, the, her mother came in yesterday with her son, who is a hockey player. They went through structural fingerprint exams, so I'm quite sure we'll have a family package here. And then again, Arconia lasers. We've got too many case histories where we show that this reduces inflammation the fastest. So once this girl starts with her orthotics and once we get a few treatments in with the laser, I can't wait to show that it is not juvenile arthritis, it's biomechanical faults. So Brandon, there you have it. Let me see what we did. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes. We still got it in under 20 minutes. You did a great job. So I've got a, a question from one of our regular attendees on um, the, uh, she's asking, is the Atlas operating system flowchart shown to the patient on the report of findings? No. No, that's what we know to do. And, and again, we're coming at, foot levelers and I are coming out with more and more information as time goes on. But that's our operating system. It's not really privy to the patient. Okay. And we'll give a chance to see if she has a follow-up question on that. But, uh, you know, I don't get a chance to sit in on a lot of these as Stephen Baker kind of um, you know, is typically around. He's vacationing, by the way, so um, he's Good enjoying for the, the sunny west side there. But, but um, I, uh, you know, I want to thank you again for for laying this down, and and I want to also thank all the attendees that come in week after week, time out of their office to uh, to watch these live, and then the many of them that that take time out of their busy schedules to watch the recorded versions. Um, I know we'll be back at it next week. And uh, then you and I will be seeing each other next week as well. So no follow-up questions uh, from any other doctors. So I want to wish everybody a wonderful week, and thanks for attending. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Take care. Take care.